Citizens of the Reject. Give me my present. Give me my birthday <laughs> present. Yeah, look wow. what Michael gave me. Your best And card. he put it together himself. I did. It was really hard. It I believe really, that. Really I put hard. one together and I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is a, a four week. It was rough. This is amazing. Happy Thank birthday, you. Right? I'm going to pull a Harrison Ford, Jordan just Schlansky <laughs> thing and just smash it. <laughs> 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 uh, ladies and gentlemen, please follow our Star Wars aficionado. MJ Tesla on social media. They'd be very much appreciated. And thank you guys for watching our videos. Last week's was a hit and loved the episode. So it really pays off when you love the episode. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, leave a like. That'd be very much appreciated. As always, full length reaction watch along where you sync up with your own copy of Ahsoka available for our Super Sexy Rejects. Cover several stuff exclusively over there. We got a sponsor. Sponsors do help out, especially with the plethora of host Real Rejects now has, along with any additional editing help we get. You know how it goes. Let's roll that sponsor. Want to give a shout out to the masterminds at Goat Games creators of some of the hottest RPGs in the mobile. Today they bring us another gem, Bloodline Heroes of Lethus. In Bloodline, you'll build a kingdom and collect champions to defend it. The coolest part? Craft your very own legendary champions by blending bloodlines of elves, demons, orcs, and so many more. It's free to play. Just hit the link in the description box or scan the QR code right here. Immerse in a mobile game like never before. Merry Bloodlines, creating thousands of hybrid champions. Ever thought about mixing a Lycan and Dragonborn? Now you can! not Plus, there are insane guild wars, events, and nail-biting arena battles. Meet the Tide Raisers, fierce demigods from the darkest seas. My personal favorite? The Vampire Clan Divella. Here's Lionstone, a tank champion who's an absolute beast. All right, so some juicy stuff. Number one, download now for free on Android and iOS. Use my link below or scan the QR code. Two, grab a starter pack worth $20 with my link. We're talking summoning crystal, heaps of gold and diamonds. Three, first 30 to drop their account ID and username below. You're snagging a free, legendary, female succubus champion, the Luxuriant. So don't wait. Dive into Bloodline Heroes of Lethus and let the adventure begin. Thank you again for sponsoring this video. We should have Thrawn this time, right? Maybe. Ron or Ezra. I'm going to throw my hat in the ring for we see Ezra. Both. I'm going to go both. <laughs> <laughs> I control the edit. Let's that on see. both because then <laughs> you'll win one way or another. Whoa. Intergalactic hyperspace travel looks sick. Trippy. So yeah. psychedelic. My God, it's full of stars. This is what happens when you have the death sticks. Intergalactic travel within a star whale. Well, I really have done it all. <laughs> I remember them from the stories you would tell us. When you were a child building a lightsaber? I still have those stories in my archive memory. Would you like to hear one? Yes. Oh, yes, please. Lore, dump it. Not right now. Ugh. She went with the enemy willingly. Impossible. I saw it through the Force when I held the map. Well, that is troubling. You don't seem concerned, buddy. <laughs> I'm convinced Hu Yang is Force-sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can be, you know, in the new Star Wars. The force runs through all living things. She was fated to make that choice. There wasn't enough time to prepare her to make the right one. Not destiny, don't forget. Force provides you with insight, but it does not give one all the answers. Perhaps for Sabine, it was the only choice. Mm. A choice she made for herself. That is your fear. Ooh. You can't control her. Second thought. Tell me one of those stories. <laughs> Laura, we're not going to hear it, Michael. A long time ago. Ah, say it. In a galaxy <laughs> yes. far, far away. <laughs> nice. Is that the first time a character's actually said it? At least in live so, action, right? Yeah. That's, Wait, that's guys, lovely. Wait, guys. Title. Title, which meanings I never properly decipher oh. <laughs> what they mean. Far, far, far away. away. Okay. That's where we're going. That's the one that's title perfect. I will that's easily far understand. Look. <laughs> it's perfect. It's everything. <laughs> I was hoping for a room with a view. <laughs> you get the best view in the house. I would think this would be an opportunity for reflection. I try to avoid that. I can understand why. <laughs> there are no mirrors. We had a deal. You promised me I would see Ezra again. It takes time to get there. Careful how you word that. The prisoner. Is impatient. <laughs> her focus to find Ezra Bridger blinds her. I believe she can still be of some use to us. How so? We have arrived at our destination. Oh, I'm so excited. Preparing to exit hyperspace. Thank you for flying Star Tours. <laughs> <laughs> that is a beautiful visual. Yeah. Oh, uh, what is it gonna look like? Like space. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the final frontier. Oh, cool. Oh, that's sick. That is Peridia. 
Viridia. The ancient homeworld of my ancestors, huh. the Dathomiri. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's what I said. Let's get witchy. <laughs> the migration route used by the star whales as they traverse the void from one galaxy to the other. Fast as. Among the first to harness and ride the creatures in the days before time was counted. Oh, wow. history. Wow, wow. The whales came here to die. Viridia is a graveyard. Oh, huh. good. Let's uh, build some stuff Daffa on top of it. A Mary whale graveyard. I oh, can't believe I got a guess right. <laughs> I'm so happened. proud of you, Greg. <laughs> Dude, you're killing it. Next season, it'll be me. Let us not keep them waiting. Interesting. Oh, I'm I'm so excited. <laughs> I tell you, the Night oh. Sisters know how to build some cool looking ships. Wait till you see their graveyard. It just only made sense because I'm like, how would Thrawn be communicating and all that and, and know to talk to her? Why would she want to go, right? Yeah. yeah. No, oh, the yeah. alliance is beginning to make much more sense. Yeah. And in Whoa. the weapon against the greater adversary. Whoa. Oh, oh man. <laughs> it's like the statues in Lord of the Rings. I love how they're keeping it in this perspective. It's like when you're on a plane and you're like, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> is that the Grand Canyon? Holy moly. Nothing God, uncomfortable about that. The mouths on these things. Jesus. That's what he's up. Oh, she's so happy. It's home. But like culturally, what happens when you're separated by an entire galaxy for that long? My ship is pure gold. <laughs> oh, Where's man. Thrawn with his mimosa? <laughs> Do you think we'll see him this soon or... No, I think I think sisters. Wrong. Let's get witchy. Come on. Oh, this is so exciting for Star Wars. Oh wow. <laughs> oh, it's a ghost concert. Keep it together, Morgan. <laughs> Oh my god, look right at me. Welcome, child of Dathomir. Oh, wow. Oh, even the echo. You do our ancestors credit. Thank you, great mother. Great mother. You heard our call to you in the dream. Oh. Visions guided me across the stars. Oh. That's right. More witches. <laughs> More witches. And you came as Thrawn promised. Ah. Where is Thrawn? You shall wait. He is coming. They're talking to us. <laughs> In episode eight, he will be here. It reeks of Jedi. <laughs> oh, nope. Man. Look at the wrong oh. people. It is dangerous. Yeah, historically speaking. Oh, my. <laughs> I am so into this right now. It's another training exercise. Close your eyes. <laughs> Ooh. 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 Oh. It will wait in solitude. It is. <laughs> hey, we had a deal. Where is Ezra? Where is he? Ezra is where you're going right now. This is the reunion. I feel it. Do you feel it? It just feels so soon. Soon. We're an episode. <laughs> We're almost done with this, Michael. <laughs> It's going to be on the other side of the wall. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I Loth wolves? Oh. <laughs> uh, are those loath wolves? I, I mean, I can't imagine those are loath wolves, but they look like wolves. This is phenomenal. I mean, loath wolves have the capability of... It's true. They, they do have some force sensitivity going on. This is a fascinating series of events for him. Does he fit in? I think he's bored. <laughs> <laughs> Thought we'd be more into our plan by now. This is a land of dreams and madness. <laughs> Children's stories come to life. It is a silly place. I know no such stories. Oh. When I was a bit older than you are now, mm -hmm. <laughs> I watched everything I knew burn. The Jedi Temple. Oh, it's the first time she's hearing this. Look at history. You realize it's all inevitable. Thanos. Fall of the Jedi. Rise of the Empire. All great titles. It repeats again and again. Always with some new hope. Break the wheel. What I seek is the beginning. So I may finally bring this cycle to an end. 
Yeah. Okay. I, I love them together. I know. And that beginning is here. If the old stories are true. God, it fucking sucks that he died. Yeah, I'm sad there can't be like a <laughs> spinoff about the two of them. Yeah, for so many I reasons. Know. And just watching this, you're like, shit. What am I doing? Respond, Ezra. Part of me wonders if there's other Jedi in this galaxy. Maybe he's found his place among them. Or he's just a nomad. Oh, uh, shit. What if Ezra becomes, she becomes Padawan to him in some way? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Oh. Let's do this. Fear is the mind killer. <laughs> Come on. I bet that's Ezra doing it. This place is too dark. I bet that's Ezra. No, damn it. Uh, <laughs> I think Thrawn's arriving. The amount of misleading they do with her in the Force. Yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant. Playing chicken with us. Someone's here to make an impression. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. God. Well, glad to see he got it fixed up. I know, Burgle's kept it intact. Yo, that's sick. That's oh, so sick. Wowie. You can kind of see where some parts might have been fixed up. Oh, uh, look at the <laughs> symbols. Oh, so damn. This would have been cool on a big screen, I'll tell you. Maybe. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you can see. That's cool. Wow. Wow, the scale of that. Ooh. Oh boy. The Benny Jesuit were right. Thrawn's here! <laughs> Just oh, it's me! <laughs> He's got a whole army! <laughs> he sure does. Whoa. I bet that guy's gonna amount to not much. Whoa. Oh. oh, they're chanting his name. <laughs> nice frame. Wow. That guy looks really cool, and he's probably going to be no one. Great music. Again. Jeez. I mean, just elements of Thrawn's theme. Wow, he looks so good. What was first just a dream has become a frightening reality. Oh, I love that they got him. For those who may oppose us. <laughs> Great mothers, I salute you. <laughs> Hell yeah. This is Enoch, captain of my guard. You shall begin the cargo transfer. Enoch. I have seen the catacombs. Mm -hmm. It will take some time. At least three rotations. That's three days. They have brought a prisoner. Oh, he knows. Oh, he Sabine. knows who that prisoner is. You never spoke of this. We did not see it. It is a loose thread. Well, oh. speak to me of this. They like the fates. She could be of some use to us. And you are. Balen Skull. Then you must be General Balen Skull. Oh. General. Of the Jedi Order. I parted ways with the Jedi long ago. They served together. You would not be the first. <laughs> is that it? To Ezra? Sabine Wren. Now there's a familiar name. Yes. Yeah. Did she bring art with her? She'd be of great use to us. Oh, and you can use her to bargain too. Love the vibe of oh, this episode. Oh boy, this is a fun reunion. Yeah, it's so grim, so ominous. Sabine Wren. Throng. What a delight it is after so long to see a familiar face. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I understand it is you I have to thank for my escape from exile. <laughs> Where's Ezra? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the desire to be reunited with your long lost friend. How that singular focus will reshape our galaxy. Just answer the question. <laughs> no need for hostility. I'm aware of your agreement with Balin Skull, and I intend to honor it. Of course you do. You shall have provisions, amounts, and our latest intel on Bridges' whereabouts. Oh, so he's just on the planet alone. You helped my cause. Now I shall help yours. <laughs> Brilliant. Once my starship departs, you'll be stranded here forever. That's fine. <laughs> it's also quite possible that your friend is dead. If you survived, I'm sure he's doing just fine. <laughs> Burn. You've gambled the fate of your galaxy on that belief. You wouldn't understand. 
Perhaps mm. not. Oh boy. Oh, not low twelve. And yeah, this either way. Filling in the missing armor with gold in the Japanese style. Yeah. Roman brilliant. esque gladiator. They call that kitsune. So the night troopers are culturally appropriating Japanese culture. That's right. What did you hear the first time in Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of the Jedi? Nomads wander this wasteland and prey upon each other for survival. Is a nomad. Mad Max world. Kind of feel like they're sending her. Die well. <laughs> huh. Bars. So that they can find him. You think we're doing you a solid when really you're doing us a solid? I feel like I'm watching Game of Thrones right now. Yeah, oh, she's riding out north Dune, of the wall. Dune of Thrones. <laughs> I love how desolate this is. Yeah. It really does feel like a Lord of the Rings. You may follow her. I thought you were to honor your agreement. Yes, to catch Bridger. So being Ren will have the opportunity of finding Ezra Bridger, just as promised. And if she does, bait, bait. You and your master will destroy them both. Those loopholes uh, will get you. I think Ezra could probably whoop their asses. So curious what Ezra's like at this particular point in time. I think he's probably grown exceptionally more powerful over time. Oh, steady. I wonder if the beginning was the only time we'd see Ahsoka. I love the contrast of her hair. Whoa. Oh, oh, damn. Use the frickin' force, my dude. Oh. Oh, oh cool. Nice helmet. I oh. love new species. Come on, Ezra. Oh, yeah, we are going look cool. at this like, whole samurai Sick kind here. of samurai, exactly. Hell yeah. Ooh, oh, hell man. yeah. How's that, Mandalorian? Now we... Oh. Oh. Say who you're looking for. Oh, they're going to see that. That's going to... Sweet. Damn. Yes. Oh. That's a great fight for her. Nice. <laughs> Fine. Oh. You win. <laughs> kind of reminiscent of the... Tuscan Raiders. But the way that creature looked at the lightsaber, there was a sense of familiarity. Yeah. Oh, I like this galaxy. All right, I'm sorry. Bailing riding on him. This is so freaking cool. God, the symmetry. And it does feel like a much more ancient part of the galaxy. Should we not send more troops to support them? <laughs> During this exile, our numbers have dwindled. So, no, two squads will suffice. God, I cannot get over that they brought him over. He's so good. <laughs> He's perfect. Objective is to escape this galaxy. Matters not whether Ren and Bridge are killed. The same can be said for your two mercenaries. Isn't it crazy? I wish uh, they'd done away with his outfit. Also, did he just say he wants to wipe out the Yeah. <laughs> that may, I guess we'll have that Jedi turn. Well, that creates an interesting alliance. You! You abandoned me! All right. Just met. Should have known you were a coward. Yeah, all the things she wants to say to Ahsoka. No, <laughs> oh, It walks like a dire wolf. This does not feel like a volume. Okay. Fine. <laughs> I'll give you another chance, but you better not bail on me this time. Got it? Bailing on me. I love how threatening this creature looks at first. It's actually so friendly. It's a metaphor for this whole side of the galaxy. Is he under a rock? You're embarrassing yourself. Come on. Jedi, lift the rock. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Is this a speaking character? <laughs> okay, yeah, that trick's over. Oh, hermit crab guy. Get up, come on, I can see you there. Cool, a new creature. <laughs> oh, I know, it's so exciting. <laughs> what? Actually, he kind of reminds me of the uh, Jedi survivor. Yeah. No, this little fella. It's the guy from Men in Black. Little crustacean. Oh, he has a cute little outfit. Max. 
No, no, it won't hurt you. Do you understand? I understand everybody. <laughs> it's really cute. I know. Is there a toy available yet to buy? <laughs> Merchandise? This is my friend Franklin. He's gonna see the lightsaber. Oh, he knows the symbol. Yeah. Oh, my oh hell yes. Oh. You know how it's possible. Oh, it has a little community. Uh -huh. Ezra befriending the animals. Yeah. I expect nothing less. I mean, these aren't quite animals. They're a civilization of sentient, well-dressed. Let's go rock trolls from Frozen. Do you know Ezra Bridger? He's my friend. <laughs> C-3PO when you need him. You know the one she seeks so desperately. He's too young. He comes from a breed of Boken Jedi. <laughs> Boken Jedi. I love that. You. I trained to be something more. A super Jedi. Jedi Pro plus Max. Do you miss it? The order. Miss the benefits. The idea of it. Mm. It's a good way. But not the truth. The weakness. There was no future there. So many of these orders. I see what once was the great witch kingdom of the Dathmiri. Standing on the rubble of greatness. They seem eager to leave this place. They flee a power greater than their own. That's the Grisk. Finally. They flee a fixer-upper. Something calls to me. <laughs> Can't you hear it? <laughs> Can't you see it? I see bandits. Yeah. <laughs> the enemy of our enemy is our friend. For now. <laughs> Perhaps. Man, the way they frame them together is perfect. There's just something so much bigger at play, and I'm so excited for it. Did he build, like, a little village? Why is the baby so different looking than the parents? Don't have a shell yet. Gotta get a, gotta get a shell. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hope that they don't do anything to these people. I've got a bad feeling about <laughs> that. It's way too happy right now. I knew I could count on you. Oh, <laughs> huh? he looks great. Hell yeah. Though. Sure took you long enough. <laughs> Classic. You didn't exactly tell any of us where you were going. That's because I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> Always a plan. Never a good one. Hey, it worked, didn't it? Classic banter between them. Hmm? Didn't it? Oh, oh he doesn't know it. <sighs> it worked. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> wow. <laughs> they make baby. <laughs> Do it right here. Consecrate the reunion. <laughs> it's a sick outfit for him. Yeah, look at that mail. I see my friends found you. Yeah. Your very own band of rebels. <laughs> <laughs> You're riding a hound. How'd that happen? In fact, how did you find me? <laughs> How did you get here? Let's not talk about that. Mm, that feels important. Sabine. Hey. Mm. I just want to be happy that I found you. After all this time, can I have that? Can the audience have that? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> then Balin comes in and slaughters all <laughs> 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 The women. The children. Turn it into a clam bake. Sabine. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Can't wait to go home. About that. Ooh. <laughs> it's pretty great casting, man. It really does. Oh, he's, he's right on the money. Yeah. <laughs> Made him look grown up in the right kind of ways. They ride the travelers. Well, that is unwelcome news. <laughs> <laughs> up to our eyeballs in Jedi. Could it be the recently deceased Sokotan? Impossible. Yeah. I thought it was beyond you. <laughs> to underestimate a Jedi. Thrawn knows better. Death and resurrection are common deceptions played out by both Night Sister and Jedi. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And yet, he was once a Jedi. <laughs> so, 
We must regard him as flawed. <laughs> you run rings around you logically. We shall consider Sokatan alive once a window by the wise. Oh, finally a character with brain. And we shall prepare accordingly. I want to know her background, history, home world, her master, everything. What kind of art she likes? If a star whale approaches Peridia, destroy it with prejudice. Say something racist before you do it. I shall once again require the aid of your dark magic. Yes, Sweet let's go. Sauce. The thread of destiny demands it, Granddad. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. All right. He kind of looks like Robert Patrick. A little bit. <laughs> There's a little Vladimir Putin, too, in his face. That's what they were going for, boy. <laughs> Blue Putin. That was well directed, too. All righty. Well, uh, I want to mention something that if uh, we, we do have like a Real Rejects podcast, and so if you are listening to this on you know, Apple, Spotify, whatever it may be, please rate it. That would really help us out a lot. And also, uh, I did not mention this at the top. Probably should have. Thank you to everyone who's been buying shirts from uh, Real Rejects Apparel, man. It's been it's been really awesome to see your guys' support. Right now, I'm wearing my, uh, you know, the uh, protection, uh, protection services. services. I love that one so much. I came up with that. It's so funny. Uh, yeah, I love this one. Of course, we've had our Ahsoka shirts. A lot of you guys have been buying that as well. we got a bunch of other apparel and working on a new Ahsoka shirt right now. And it's almost done. It's almost done. I think you guys are really going to like it. I, I really love that one. But anyway, let's talk about the episode. All right. Who goes first? How about this? Let's weigh it by this scale. Ooh. Okay, John, um, uh, Cold Stones, Creamery, uh, rank it. What, what, what would you say really quick? We'll um, go through everyone. Between like it, love it, and gotta have it? No. Um, I guess it's a love it then. All right. You know? All right, Michael? Um, it's the... The birthday cake flavor and like, could they add some cookie? Dough? Oh wait, uh, <laughs> going by the increments of this. Oh, I'm making my order. Set. Yeah, uh, I felt <laughs> cookies and cream about this episode. You know what I mean? A few nuts, a cherry, maybe. No, I I think this was a. It was the perfect opening to something new, which is a, <laughs> is my favorite. So are you like an, Are you on a line? Are, are you? Do you, new do you like it or love it or gotta have it? Or are you? I like, gotta have it. Okay, so Good. that's the highest that's the rank. Best. Yeah, that's no, the I gotta have it, uh, and I love it, yeah. and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, see all of the above, and uh, I would say I, I, no, nah, I, I, I gotta have it. Yeah, I gotta have it. I, I, well, I, now I, mean, I feel pressured to up this my is rate. Eight. <laughs> this, this is a, I, I really, I really like this one a lot. Um, this is one of the best ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, John, considering your uh, overwhelming praise was not as high yes. as whatever Michael was doing, uh, well, you go first, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this and the previous episodes certainly feel like they have a, a, a fluidity of momentum that naturally comes one into the other, and I. You know, again, as the least uh, comprehensively knowledgeable person in this room, this episode... <laughs> Related to Star Wars or in general? In general, okay. across <laughs> life, <laughs> I am certain. Uh, but Star Wars as well. <laughs> this episode uh, really did a nice thing for me, which was it did feel like it was taking advantage of that gradual, deliberate, and pensive tone that this show particularly wants to put forward. But also, um, it felt like it was applying that tone in just the right amount to exploration and to uh, setting up suspense and mm -hmm. to all of the flavors they were hoping to build. So the only reason I felt kind of short of being like, I gotta have it is because I'm at that point where I'm like, especially again, as of these two episodes, I'm like, this is cooking and I'm really enjoying the progression we're making. Even the arrival of Thrawn, the arrival of Ezra, those are things that certainly probably mean more to you, but to me still got me excited, still got me worried. I mean, you know, we've had all these issues in these shows of things being set up well and maybe not being paid off. But for right now, the introduction of this new big bad, seeing this new side of the world, I was quite pulled in and dazzled by a lot of that stuff. And, and yeah, now the only thing sort of I, I've learned with these shows to be a little bit cautious as to how they go about sticking their landings and paying things off. But this felt like the kind of episode that both manages to give you not everything, you know, it doesn't blow the load too soon, but this one actually does give you some things you've been anticipating, and it does so whilst maintaining the gradual yeah. tone they've just wanted have to, to think about grandma. <laughs> this this was very nicely pitched to me. This was 
very well balanced, and uh, I am just hoping oh. that they can maintain and continue to build on this as we go. That's really funny. Uh, <laughs> all right, yeah. Um, this part of the chapters in YouTube video is is called uh, General Thoughts, or huh. just Ahsoka Episode 6 I don't, I'm not familiar with General Thoughts. Well, <laughs> where did, we're, 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 we're going we're gonna to have chapters for, like, you know, Thrawn, yeah. Ezra. Oh, sure. So, so what is it, your general review? I mean, my, my general <laughs> thoughts are they took us to a new galaxy. I think they successfully achieved making us feel like we were in a new galaxy. Mm. I really love that this one is inspired a lot more heavily on, like, Eastern culture, uh, and in particularly, like, really leaning into some of the more kind of mythological and, and almost fantastical elements of Star Wars. Uh, I, what they did in terms of, like, demonstrating how time has passed and what they've done with, like, Thrawn and his people, I thought was just marvelous. Like, clearly Dave Filoni, like, played Fallout New Vegas and got some inspiration <laughs> from some of the sick... Uh, like gladiator slash like samurai esque inspiration of uh, uh, of the armor, um, but it was it was new and refreshing, and it was nice to like see an alien species that we didn't all know right away, um, and to almost in that moment of being lost in translation, uh, and even like to to your point, like as we were entering the galaxy and seeing it through the perspective of them looking out the window, it was nice to have something just new. Um, so general thoughts are, I'm like super excited to see where this goes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I loved, I mean, I agree with everything you guys said. I loved the, I love the mood of it. Like I was just vibing with this episode again, that tone, which has been somewhat conflicting for some audiences. And then even for ourselves in a couple of episodes where it wasn't quite driving with us, it's very much applicable for stepping into unknown terrain. Mm you know, where everything kind of feels like it could be a threat of some kind. And I think the transportation to this new galaxy is really, really cool. I didn't quite yet. Get, I really feel like we just ventured to a new planet. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, have, I haven't quite in, I haven't quite got that feeling of, yeah. whoa, you know, yeah. crazy new galaxy. It, it feels like, yeah, new, some new creatures, some new aliens. Yeah. And, but but the, the point of it was to establish like the ancient ruins and, and I really I really enjoyed that part of it and I think the the build and setup of what's to come is really exciting stuff. I think this is one of those episodes that can be easy for some people perhaps to criticize as well because because of the build up to a yeah. new galaxy and it is just kind of barren wasteland and you don't really see much that feels like entirely yeah. new. Yeah. You know because a lot of it feels like uh, if anything, it, it feels like multiverse version of some of the things we kind of know sure, <laughs> already sure. and, and our pl uh, that, was, yeah. that we've been familiar with. However, it is just the first one. And to me, what's more important is establishing goals, motivation, character, more than aesthetic. Because if we were getting yeah. more of that and less of character, then we'd be complaining about that shit instead. Yeah. And I feel like what we got uh, outweighs it all. Now let's really talk about them and the good stuff, right? God. <laughs> well, uh, I think that's a perfect segue, uh, if it's all right to talk about Thrawn. Yes. Uh, I, I feel I'm chomping at the bit here. I'm, <sighs> when can I go in there and talk about Thrawn? <laughs> 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 right After now. this prolonged pause. <laughs> yes. <laughs> After a word from our sponsors, <laughs> uh, Thrawn and the Night Sisters. One chapter of time. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I we're gonna we're gonna bundle them up for time's sake. Uh, they are trying to flee this galaxy. Yeah, and that to me is the most exciting part of this entire story. Is that you have like these like sage elders, and I love how like they've really played into like the fates from Greek mythology, even with like the threat. Like it's it's not so on the nose. Um, it is the nose. Uh, <laughs> there is something bigger and scarier that they are fleeing from. And I think when you kind of recontextualize this story and that the reason that the first planet that we see is so dead and barren is because this is a galaxy that is near its end, uh, sets up something that is big and different and exciting. Um, and I think also 
puts all of these characters into a very, very strange uh, predicament. And I think, like I've said from the beginning, like Thrawn is one of the most complex, interesting characters in Star Wars. I hope that they do him justice. Um, I, just like seeing the transition from animation to live action, I mean, it's like beautiful, other than his, his outfit, which needs to go. <laughs> like everyone else got a <laughs> sweet new deal. And it was a coming boy. <laughs> yeah, just something new. Um, but I get it. Just like they need a blue to outfit. <laughs> but um, Lars played him in, in Rebels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and to have that uh, continuity of character. And I thought his performance was just. Yeah. They um, won't get that with Rex. No. Because Rex is probably dead at this point. No, I mean, when, <laughs> when, when Rex appeared in the flashback. Oh, no. Uh, I mean, listen, they, they, they got <laughs> it. They were, they were throwing us. <laughs> They were throwing us bird seed, and, and we took it and ate it like happy little birds because uh, we're all pigeons in Dave Filoni's world. Um, the voids. Put that on a plaque. Uh, we're all pigeons perched on Dave Filoni's hat. That's exactly it. But, no, I mean, Thrawn's gravitas, I think his like, weird cult-like thing that he's got going on is really unique. Part of me wondered for a minute, because they were like, very very gung-ho about Thrawn I mean like saying his name as like he's like god emperor part of me wonders if the Dathomir witches have maybe used a little of their magic to bring a little extra obedience to the troops because it was a little cult-like um and while Thrawn is compelling I'm I'm not quite convinced that he's like god emperor level um uh but yeah honestly I would love to just like I mean they've been stranded and they need a leader is he like the Wilson volleyball to their Tom Hanks and Castaway? <laughs> if that is the analogy <laughs> well, the, you wish to draw. That's the only analogy there <laughs> yeah. is to use. <laughs> well, and they've been exiled into a place where magic and dark magic at that is very much a thing. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe. Yeah. I, I'm, I, would, I would love, I know we'll never see it. I would love to see like how the <laughs> separation from Ezra Bridger went down. Uh, when they first arrived in this place and, and all of that. I mean, yeah, we probably won't, but rem- when we're talking about yeah. Ezra, remind me to just, just say, Greg, what was that thing you want to bring up? Sure, I'm going to forget. And then, uh, <laughs> then I'm one of us. I remember it. what that <laughs> Remind is. us in the comments <laughs> section. <Yeah. laughs> um, but, John, I'm curious to get uh, your thoughts on, because, yes, I think for 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 us familiar with what they, what they have done is, because, like, while they have the books of Thrawn and everything, yeah bringing Lars Mikkelsen over, um, they have, they're sent, they are continuing the exact, like, like while you got whoever plays Sabine Wren doing her own rendition, while you got Rosario Dawson doing her own rendition, <laughs> this, is, this is a straight up, yeah, this is a straight up continuation from the yeah. animation into here, um, where, where I, I feel like perhaps some of the makeup might get a little bit criticized. It's pretty bright, uh, you know. I think they have a cat. The guy's, cat bane. The guy's blue. The guy's I mean, blue. It's, it's just. You, yeah. I feel like if you've seen the image, it, it didn't bother me having seen some images and having heard him speak a few times. Anything is better than the Grand Inquisitor in Obi Wan. Sure, yeah. <laughs> so like, but, <laughs> uh, but with 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 not as much familiarity, I would say. Uh, what would you? What What was your impression of the villain that we that they've been building up to this whole time? Uh, yeah, it's certainly a gradual one because he is so calm, collected, in control. But it was a very intriguing start to that for me, especially given that he has this very unique and very sort of imposing looking squadron of taped up sort of. They almost they almost feel like uh, like, uh, oh, God, I'm going to blank the name. But, you know, like the, the army of the dead <laughs> in Lord of the Rings oh, or sure, something sure. like that, you know. And, and yeah, there is that sort of like cult level adherence that they might be under or whatever but at least from here i was sitting here going like well this guy does seem like he has he just carries himself with that level of poise but also you can tell that there is such sort of uh power and desire beneath the surface and Mm -hmm. such a kind of will of vision at least here right now (laughs) 
<laughs> I thought this was a solid start, a solid setup, because of course they're not. I didn't expect them to ever introduce him with some kind of like huge violent moment or anything like that. I understand this guy is at least supposed to be cunning and supposed to be maybe not just your average, you know, mustache twirling zealot. And this was in line with that, and it yeah. definitely had me curious and genuinely so <laughs> to see where the rest of this goes. And it's also bolstered by the fact that you've got witches and and again these cool gold you know riffs on stormtroopers and stuff. Yeah, I, I'm when Michael and I were first discussing Thrawn a few episodes, we were like really debating. I was like, no, the guy's straight up a villain, and a lot of that is just fr- like I, I read. Um, the, oh my god, now's not a time to blink. <laughs> a book, <laughs> the, the, the comic at it. I didn't read the actual uh, novel. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, what, what, uh, what the hell's the title of it? Thrawn. <laughs> is it just called Thrawn. Yeah, it's the name of the series. And the army of Dunharrow. Those are the. There's the not a ones subtitle the to it. Well, there's the ascendancy. Um, what was the one from the Marvel one that they adapt? They adopted straight from the like uh, uh, where the it starts it off, where he gets goes into like he's yeah, literally yeah. brought over and he's talking about the jizz and he, he has a lieutenant and yeah and he uh, on the dark world. It's a uh, it rises the ranks. Yeah, is it just called Thrawn? I think it's just called Thrawn. Thrawn Ragnarok. Damn, I, thought, I, thought, I really <laughs> I thought it was. Thunder. I really thought there was like a subtitle. I mean, there, there might be a subtitle, uh, but no, it's because Heir to the Empire was the old books. Yeah. Um, the Empire's, but I anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you've always seen him as evil, even after reading. No, 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 not from th- there. He's like straight up like a protagonist. Um, yeah, no. Uh, I'm saying that the the strongest um, uh, connection I I did have was via Rebels, where they played him very much like a villain. Yeah. And I was hoping that with adapting him to live action, that we would get more of that nuance yeah. um, from like the books that you've read. Or from the comic I read that I, I that I was hoping they yeah. they would bring that and here it seems like they're, they're pretty much just leaning villainy. Uh, uh, I I I think that is could be a very well done misdirection. Um, I mean, <laughs> Skifold and I hope. They're no, I mean, it, it <laughs> shows up with a whole army. No, it doesn't I, matter. Kill, dispose I, of villain and <laughs> shit if must be. <laughs> Let me do Listen, some I, villainous <laughs> shit really quick. <laughs> I think I think he has number one. I think you can still be a villain, i.e. the Soviets. And like fight against the worst evil, i.e. the Nazis. Like, yeah. That being said, doesn't make you less of a villain. You're you're still a villain. You just happen to be on the right side. I think that whatever they're running away from in this galaxy is ultimately the the big big villain, and what? and that has always been Thrawn's motivation as a character. Yeah, like, that is the his like collective like the reason he he became part of the Empire. The reason that. He did over everything that he did. I think his mistrust for the Jedi is like not necessarily misplaced. No. In that, like, <laughs> you know, like was well, friends with Anakin, how'd that work out? Like and, and, well, and know? he also judges based off of history and lineage. Yeah. And um not one mention of art here, you son of a bitch. That's why he's <laughs> mad. That's why he wants to leave. There's no art. <laughs> yeah, I can't is, learn anything. Where is the pan- all these statues yeah. have big mouths and it's making me this really <laughs> uncomfortable? Uh, yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I like, uh, but I, overall, I like Lars Mikkelsen's performance, yeah. and uh, obviously, it was funny. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna try this. It sounded sensitive because he's very. Thrawn is usually portrayed as uh, you what know, buff? No, very skinny. Um, yeah, he's a scrappy little. He's skinny. He's gaunt. <laughs> this yeah. is a well-fed Thrawn. And yeah, he's a well-fed. <laughs> Thrawn. A well-fed little Thrawn. little little belly he's got there. Um, but however, I kind of like it for the updated portrayal, especially sure. upon his introduction when you get that profile shot. Yeah. Like, oh, he's found a way to kind of make it work. Here. Yeah, a little, bit, yeah. a little bit luxurious. And I'd rather yeah. get the performance of Lars more than anything well, that, else. Uh, that is kind of, I think, the best argument there. <laughs> but I also think that he probably just has a little belly. And I mean, yeah, white he's doesn't, he's not gonna get white doesn't look good on anybody <laughs> no. after Labor Day. I, I'm like, saying that I think people will bring it up. Yeah. And I'm saying I actually think it kind of works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, no. with um, it. I'm for it. Uh, and okay, so we got that, <laughs> and then uh, but Ezra Bridger. I, Ezra, I'm so happy. Uh, <laughs> I I just think the casting was perfect. I was so worried that he was going to be wearing his Rebels outfit and was going to look so st- like he looked so bad in the hologram, and I was so scared that that was like what we were going to see. And instead, we got this like entirely new look that still felt Jedi. Um, but also felt so different. Uh, instantly, instantly, his chemistry uh, with Sabine was just like no, straight, straight like, plucked out. Yeah, which is the perfect. back and forth. And which answer. honestly, like, 
I'm really like Ahsoka's last episode really kind of solidified um, just the growth and I was really hoping this episode would do it for me, Mm -hmm. um, for Sabine. I still haven't seen it. I'm hoping a little bit more time with Ezra and the two of them and their dynamic might give us something, but I'm I'm beginning to think maybe I just don't like Ja, like which stinks because I loved her character in in Rebels, um, but the live action portrayal just has not been doing it for me. But I thought the build up to Ezra was great. It was also just like a really nice juxtaposition from like angry like like hermit Luke, um, and to get like oh no here's like happy Ezra still being Ezra yeah. still true to himself. Um, just a little bit older, a little bit wiser. Yeah, I mean, he's wise. He's much wiser. I mean, uh, especially for se- <laughs> he seems like it. He seems more, a little bit more sage, yeah. which I really do. I mean, appreciate. you look a little bit more sage than you used to, but I wouldn't say you're any wiser than you I were mean, when we first. Really met. fair. I mean, I haven't been stranded. <laughs> <laughs> that usually leads to some cool mystery and wisdom, yeah. as we've seen in Castaway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what was in those boxes? <laughs> so uh, I. Yeah, I I, li- I like the little bit that we got there. Uh, it, it really felt like Ezra, Ezra Bridger, but grown up. He buys Ezra Miller. <laughs> 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 and and, I, and yeah, to me, I, I did. I I I'm not in love with the Sabine performance, but this was my favorite performance of hers because I, yeah. I liked her back and forth with Thrawn. Yeah, and I liked that um, they her, her, her dynamic with Thrawn was really uh, the strongest. Her engagement with the uh, creatures I thought was really good, too. I loved her fight scene, um, and it's especially with that final moment with, with Ezra. I was like, yeah, this is my, fa- this is my favorite episode of her, yeah. uh, specifically the live-action one. But then again, John, I'm going to throw it to you here on Ezra Bridger as the buildup and not really having familiarity yeah. with him. Um, did it make an impression of sorts? Like, what's your honest take on, on here as, a, as your whatever position you are in life. <laughs> I, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, segue into this point. Um, no, uh, it was a lovely introduction because it was a ray of hope. And uh, I don't know. There was something about <laughs> the actor. <laughs> There's something about this actor showing up and especially joking about like, I don't know. You know, you start to play the math and the and the game of these shows and be like, oh, what are they going to hold on to? What are they going to not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, for everything that has come before it, again, I thought it was a genuinely bright ray to kind of cut through everything yeah. and to be like, oh, what a relief. And also, here's a guy who, you know, it doesn't hurt that I have a new character who's also not very dour at the moment to, you know, learn about and to catch up to. And uh, that, that's the reminder point. Hey, Greg, oh, wow. you say <laughs> something. Yeah, yes. He did yes, it all yeah. by himself. <laughs> okay, I, forgot, I almost forgot. <laughs> Please. Um, it is... Uh, it, oh, no, don't lose it, Greg. It's been, a, it's been a few days, guys. You don't know what's been going on in my life. Uh, okay, the... They keep okay. There's a lot of this conversation about this planet, and oh, there's like dark forces here, and it's threatening. And then you got like the witches, and and you keep you know, there's a lot of emphasis too. I think you guys know where I'm going. There's a lot of emphasis too on Thrawn. Like we gotta jump ship out of here, you know. Uh, but what I love with Ezra um, was there's an as as uh, Sabine is searching for him, she encounters creatures where there is such light generated from that, mm. you know, such joy. And then even with Ezra, he's managed to find beauty here. Mm. Um, and it's it's a great representation of dark side and light side. Yeah. yeah. And I think they really capture that tonality and just the overall spirit of this is not just, you know, pretty is not just this like evil graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> it, there There is beauty here and Ezra managed to find it whilst being a nomad. Yeah. And so I, I think that was a really strong yeah. thing they captured here on which, camera. Which they could have so easily gone the opposite direction. They yeah, could've could've have just he's been, dour he could have been uh, like on a mountain, not wanting to yeah. see a lightsaber. Well, yeah. no, like that's, uh, but actually, and, yeah. and I, I think that's one of my favorite things about Ezra as just a character in general. Like his like date of birth, <laughs> it's literally the beginning of the empire. Like his entire existence mm-hmm. has been marred by like these dark times, and yet, despite losing his parents, despite losing his master, despite getting stranded in a different galaxy, he has always been able to maintain hope and light, and I think represents 
the best of what the old Jedi was. Right. Um, and in so many ways, what the new Jedi can be. And I think for both Sabine, somebody who, from the very beginning, who grew up in the same exact times and has experienced all that, that dour and hurt and kind of retreated inward and, and cut herself off from the Force. Mm-hmm. And even Ahsoka, whom I think has been on this really powerful journey, especially in the last episode. Mm-hmm. Ezra is going to be such an important reminder of not just the light, but also the potential and that there is a future. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Which is what all the characters need. And honestly, what I'm really curious about, maybe it's what Balin needs. (laughs) Seems like it's where it's headed, man. I mean, he's he's such a. And it also really seems like uh, I know you're doing a transition here. Uh, yeah, it also yeah. seems like Thrawn, like Thrawn doesn't need to dispose of Ezra if they're just going to leave. Especially when he's saying, like, just so you know, if you if we leave and you're not on that ship, you're going to be stranded here. Yeah. So he doesn't need to dispose of them. So it seems like he's got a. I mean, I can imagine he's kind of mad at Ezra. <laughs> so. Well, now, now, now <laughs> they've got now they've not, got the Pergil, uh, so he might not feel that way. I mean, he probably Ahsoka's, feels that. I mean, no, yeah. no, the soak and the pearl. But prior to that, I'm saying, yeah, yeah, seems like he has a like he's got a personal yeah. vendetta against Ezra. I it, I think it's both a vendetta and an admiration. I mean, I think that's why my favorite part of Thrawn is he doesn't just view his enemies as enemies; he views them yeah. as people uh, who are complex <laughs> and sophisticated. And Ezra to outmatch him as like you know a little boy, <laughs> it yeah. must fascinate him in a yeah. You know, uh, your Balin point. Where were you? I love what they're teasing with Balin because what I love what they're doing with Balin is they seem like they're really setting up. I love how I'm not feeling like this is going nowhere in, in the sense of uh, we're just building to the First Order or some shit, right? Even though he's talking about that yeah. essentially, he's like, well, oh, the rise and fall, you know, empire. He's like, it's okay, like I, something I, interesting I, about I, this guy. But but it, but it seems like what he is searching for here, which they have not clarified. You have a very clear theory. You've mentioned it a few times of where they're possibly going with this. I still feel like whatever it is specifically that Balin is seeking. That's leading us. That's opened up a new door for us in Star Wars. The most is yeah. specifically his character. That's just the inkling that I'm at least well, getting. Well, I, I I think the if if they go the direction of of the the first order and and all of that and try to tie this all, I I honestly boring. think they'd be doing a giant disservice <laughs> to boring as shit. everything that they've done. No, I think where this is going, if and and it will be a miracle if they can pull it off. You have all these different elements of the Force in in terms of Balin, Ahsoka, Ezra, Sabine, um, Hu Yang, Hu Yang. No, but uh, between them all, there's there is a collective knowledge and spectrum of the Force that I, I wouldn't necessarily say is on the dark side, but represents a a nuance. Balin is a, a crusader of a bygone era, whom was disillusioned by what happened to his order. Ahsoka is a crusader from a bygone era. Yeah, yeah. Who is, they have the opportunity here, in my mind, to be Both generals. The, f- the front yeah. line mm-hmm. and, and, and the first defense for the galaxy mm-hmm. against whatever this greater evil is going to be, whether it be the, the grisk of, of the books and the comics or whether it be something that we've never seen before. And I think all of them coming together and recon- reconciling that the force is a spectrum, um, and that to achieve balance, there there has to be somewhere in between. There needs to be, you know, I, I think it will create a fascinating new Jedi order that can exist outside of, of the galaxy that we know, and that maybe can be reconnected with, you know, what they're hoping to do with the Ray series and her building her new Jedi order. Hell yeah. Um, but I, I hope that they don't, they don't just bring these characters back to the old galaxy and and put them on a collision course with seven, eight, and nine. Uh, I I hope that they they give them they have a whole new galaxy ripe for storytelling. Hell yeah! So, um, but John, which is a Dathomir? Yeah, I'm excited. finally got your witches. So excited! I mean, they're not witches of Dathomir. They're the Dathomiri witches, witches of old. Dathomir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some combination of these. Yeah. They're the Benny Jesuit. I know you are, but what am I? 
Yeah. They're the Fates. They're the Benny Jesuit. They're the Weird Sisters. They're I don't. All of it. Th- if they were any more on the nose. I mean, I just cannot wait. Like, th- th- this is all getting very heavy metal if they're going to have, like, some kind of witch showdown on some boneyard have you, planet. Have you seen any of Witches of Dathomir? Little bits and pieces, yeah. What does that mean? Bits. That's such a John <laughs> answer. What does uh, that mean? Most <laughs> what does that Witches mean? of Dathomir I would have only seen in, like, breakdown footage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there are other things that I've seen in actual episodes, but there are uh, not that. <laughs> so, I mean, like, <laughs> that take the, the idea alone gets yeah. me excited because that's just something very much up my alley. Ancient sure. Order of Witches, I would love to see yeah. how that applies to this. And those, I feel like recent Star Wars has been dogged with, uh, at least in live I'm action. My, my question is, yeah, what do you think of their, what do you think of their, um, the impression that they left? I mean, I was uh, I was very intrigued by everything. They're perhaps the element that rests the least on good casting for me. Like, it's just a generally interesting idea. And as being that we are in this ancient part of the galaxy that feels very ancient, that feels like, you know, Middle Earth ruins or something like that, they feel like characters who just naturally would root there. And I would love some kind of exploration, especially because we have had enough investment in Morgan Elsbeth at least to bring her out of Mando into this show and extrapolate yeah. on that. Um, I just yeah. as a on my wish list would love some kind of dive or for them to factor in heavily and for that aspect of this world that seems like it's kind of lost or fringe now to, you know, rear its ugly head again, especially because we do live in a moment where uh, metaphysics and mysticism are more prominent in the mainstream. And sure. I feel like, you know, Star Wars of old is commenting on a certain period of war as it is also bringing in certain film aesthetics. So I feel like this could be an interesting way to further update. I mean, like, you know, I feel like you should look beyond the spectrum of, you know, into the broader spectrum of wars for your inspiration for this instead of just always doing the Nazis over and over again. Sure. Um, but yeah, this is well, uh, you know, actually, Vietnam was also a big part of it. Sure, yeah, yeah I'm sure it was. No, yeah. yeah, I mean, I d- I agree though with John on that. Like, I yeah. I feel like yeah, the yeah. show is at risk of sometimes it seems like they put out it's like, oh, this is the planet, this is lore, backstory. Yeah, then Star Wars fans will extrapolate that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, down they'll 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 dilute it down to its like finest mineral, but we won't. <laughs> with, with the show itself won't do anything with its characters. Sure. And I feel like that's the risk that we have yeah. with it. It's like, yeah, they introduced lore, cool, but nothing really became of yeah. it emotional wise or story wise. And and that yeah. is my that is my my concern that it won't do anything. And it's more of us just you know with I, our thumbs waiting for it to be. Co- I'm not saying it's going to do that. I'm yeah, just yeah. I'm just saying that yeah. that is one no, concern. I, I think I that's have. a super valid concern. Yeah. And my my big hope here is that uh, in uh, did a lot dude. Jedi Survivor. Yeah. That was my favorite of them. I liked it more than Clone Wars. Yeah. Just because you, I think it's because you actually had to, like run around Dathomir and shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jedi Survivor in particular. And how they captured the relation between a Jedi and mm-hmm. a Witch of Dathomir mm-hmm. um, paints such a like if if this is all working towards like the Star Wars equivalent of an end game, mm-hmm. taking like the magic of Dathomir, taking the power of the force of the light and the dark, because there's an enemy that is greater than the whole of all of those is something that really, really excites me. And I think also just it would be really nice for once to just kind of flip the good and bad on its head. And I like they're the closest they've ever been to successfully doing that. Um, and I think Balin is just like the perfect representation of that. But even Morgan's character to an extent is there's a lot of like nuance in her performance. I don't want to like give her the benefit of any doubt, but like there is a, I'm 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 putting my faith in the in the writers and in Dave Filoni in particular that they're not just going to use like the witches of Dathomir to bring them to this galaxy and then to just not conclude that arc. Um, but also, what the heck happened to the witches of Dathomir in this galaxy? It seems worth exploring, to, and not to be like rip off Dune more, but like yeah, you know, yeah. th- there is such a rich well in that story with sure. the Benny Gesserit and all that stuff, and the amount of sway and just the part of the bigger political spectrum they yeah. can 
Occupy. And I think that would be a really cool, interesting thing that has been trodden, but is very much new in the live action setting. And I do feel like if they, <laughs> I don't know what their plan is for this new galaxy. And I, you brought some, one of you said something earlier, which is, you know, I hope they don't just use this as an excuse to collect up a couple characters, bring them back to the main yeah, timeline, yeah. then go right into, you know, the sequel trilogy. I'll take like, the credit for Microsoft. Yeah, Greg, that was a great point. It's that thing <laughs> you reminded me to tell you to say. Right? Um, like that's these are all things where yeah I'm waiting to see if they will be window dressing or not because if they never really bother to expound on this galaxy again I'll feel kind of let down I'll feel kind of yeah. chipped and and two I mean we are at that point where I'm like okay cool we're in this new place like you said we're kind of on one planet and it's a wreck it's a ruin it's a derelict yeah what does the rest of this place look like and how different can it be and in some ways it is like oh well. You know, how much do you show and dispel that mysticism? Or, you know, it could be an, a, a cool opportunity to really try out some new things, some new aesthetics, some new stories, some new something. Yeah. And I feel like that is something that new Star Wars has been trying yeah. to figure out really desperately. I think, like, when they, when the, it's the thing is, if there's one criticism I do actually have that just didn't pop into my head till right now. Sure. Before we entered the planet, they were saying how oh man we really should wrap this up. I gotta edit. Uh, <laughs> we were talking a while. Is that um, the before we entered? They're like, oh, the, I mean, I like the additional lore that they gave us in the Pergil and how that's connected to um, you know the, the the witches. I thought that was really cool to get. It, it, is they were setting up like how it's a graveyard and stuff, and, it, and like I really felt like there was gonna be like this menacing horror. Almost, yeah. almost the equivalent to something like two towers and uh, yeah. Yeah. Or something, yeah. something yeah. a bit yeah. more yeah. apocalyptic. Yeah, and I feel like when we travel to death in here, yeah. if that feels more horrifying <laughs> than sure. than here, you well, know. And, I, and, and, and I was I, like, I oh, I kind of wish we yeah. got some of that. I, part of me, part of me wonders if they're they're saving some of that. I like, hope. like I kind of want to like, and this is just like Michael in fantasy land at this point, but. I want. I don't think we're going to get a giant, satisfying conclusion at the end of this season. I feel like it's going to be an Empire Strikes Back situation. I yeah, it's it's going to be a big, Whoa. but it's not going to be like a satisfying conclusion to this arc. There's going to be what a I want to see is them, hiding on the planet, and then Din Djarin's going to come. Out. I, yeah. I want to <laughs> see them on the front lines of like, oh, this is like bad of oh, yeah. of whatever this big bad is. And to see a planet that's just been absolutely devastated and to realize that the threat that Thrawn is running away from is going to find its way to their galaxy. Yeah. That they're that last line of defense. I would strand um, everybody here at the end of the season. Yeah. I, 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 I think we got a lot to unpack yeah. as we move forward. What do you guys think? Yeah. I would love to, I'd love to know um, and theorize with you. Uh, but, guys, this was great. Um Friends, if you <laughs> enjoyed this, <laughs> if you enjoyed this, admire the tenacity. Use the force. <laughs> I'm done. Use the we force. The video Every now. time I'm like, I gotta wrap this up. Like, I was like, I'm gonna wrap it up for you, buddy. <laughs> Every so single hard. time, I, like, I, I use I the force shit. <laughs> to leave a like and a comment. We Make should, sure you should, hit the 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 bell button. We should shout someone out. There's we only should, a few yo, days we left should shout month. somebody out. Is it um? Is it those names right there? Yeah, yeah, the to dos, not the completes. Uh, hey, Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel. yeah, Gabriel, the archangel. <laughs> oh no, oh no, you you done it now? No, you said no. it. He hates that. Gabriel's shout out. not an angel. Oh. We've, we've done that shout so many times. Oh. He, he's expressed that he does not believe in God and <laughs> more to him than that. Gabriel, the Antichrist. <laughs> It's all That's for the direction. You, I kind of went that direction already <laughs> with another shout oh, out. Right. Gabriel, you gotta the get... everyman. Yeah. Gabriel, long for Gabe. <laughs> you know, I've been watching uh, The Office. Uh, finally, uh, I, I realized I never made it past season eight because I, was, I didn't want to let uh, Michael Scott go. And there's a oh. character on there who I know a lot of people don't really like. His name is Gabe. Yeah. And um, as I've been watching the show, I gotta say I don't get the hate for Gabe. I think Gabe's an all right guy. And I imagine this Gabriel is kind of like you, buddy. Even better. 
just lanky and um, a little bit insecure. I that was the name of the next person. Uh, <laughs> lanky, a little bit insecure, and uh, kind of trying to posture confidence, but it's never yeah. quite really there. I had posture once. And then uh, that's why uh, you insist on never mentioning the archangel element. Be- right. uh, not believer in God. Very much Gabe from The Office. Yeah. Uh, so I, that's kind of my association. Yeah. And But funny funny guy at the same time i have no idea what your physical appearance looks like one time i made a shout out about someone's physical appearance not knowing what they look like and i even stated that and they got severely offended yeah and i said i don't even know what you look like i'm clearly just making shit up on the spot here so you might be like super fat for all i know um or you could be like a dwarf uh i don't know which way you go buddy um you could be disfigured you could just be a head in a jar. <sighs> Either like a way, Futurama, a disfigured fat dwarf, a disfigured oh, fat. People must point person. at you a lot. <laughs> I mean, I get it sometimes. <laughs> uh, people must specify. Ricardo you. Martinez, <laughs> next chat. Ricardo Martinez, you are. No, no, we'll do him next week. <laughs> okay. Nah, Gabe, that's a promise. Embrace the shout out. We love you, Gabriel. Love you, Gabe. You know it's all in fun. See you, buddy.